schon wieder High Life Becomes Soft. Also relationship is this that you are in a relationship or you also have sex with other people outside. Doesn't feel the same without it. Change from partner, please go together and check out. Why you want to penetrate from behind? The female condom is like. Welcome again to GAM TV. As I said earlier on, I know most of you know your face, but uh, maybe somebody will be watching us for the first time seeing you. you can just introduce yourself to us and your role, what you do here in the KKD. Okay. Um, good day, viewers. My name is Juan Walter. I'm a public health promoter at the Municipal Health Service of the of Amsterdam, the KKD, so called. And um, working with uh, the different communities in promoting sexual health into their communities. That's what I do. So when it comes to health, it's something that is very, very, very important. Well, viewers, as you know, for the past two months, you've been watching a series on GAM television that GAM has been uh, putting on the screen for you. Uh, about the stigma and taboo of HIV. We've done a lot of programs on testing, the use of condom, and today we have the privilege to talk to Juan to enlighten us more, especially by the use of condom and testing. Well, with the programs that we've been bringing to you, most of the time we get feedbacks from the community. Well, there's this one question that um, we've realized that people are really bothered about condoms and testing. Throughout the interviews we've had so far, we've realized that people complain that the condom is not all the same as having sex without it. But our safety is more important. Okay. We are very happy to know that the community, people are really happy going in for the testing. But the problem now is, after the testing, how do we stay safe? How can you trust your partner that you've tested positive, that this person will not go around sleeping with somebody unprotected? This is what I want to talk to Juan about it. Juan. How safe it is for a person having a partner who refuses to use the condom. Okay, to prove to the person that um, he or she is clean, he suggests to go in for testing. After the testing, do you think it's safe enough to start having unprotected sex with this person? My advice will be that both partners go for a testing and not one partner mm -hmm. but before going to, uh, for a testing i will advise them to sit down and talk with each other what kind of relationship do they want do they want a open or a close relationship uh, what it means is do you want only relationship with that person you're with or an open relationship is, is that you're in a relationship but you also have sex with other people outside. Nobody will accept that I'll be in a relationship with you, but I'll have sex also outside. But the thing is, if you don't discuss it with each other, you don't know each other's uh, opinion about it. And you need to talk about it. You need to discuss with your uh, partner, you know what, things can happen. Mm -hmm. And if it happens, how do you want your partner to behave outside? Do you want your partner to have sex unprotected, that means without a condom? Or if you keep in mind that maybe your partner sometimes can be in situations that he or she cannot control themselves and decide to have sex, then it's better to negotiate with them. If you're going to have sex outside, please use a condom. Talking to most marriage couples, eh? especially the women, 
they are saying there's no way that may be seen a condom in the knowing very well that this man can mess around but sometimes uh, you can even give your partner a condom when he's going on a holiday say so, no way this means i'm um, rather um i'm giving permission permission to go and sleep around yeah but veronica let's be honest we know that not everybody can be monogamous we know that people they have feelings and sometimes temptation can be hard for certain persons, being male or female so it's better to deal with the reality that it can happen and then to keep it safe for yourself first and secondly for, for your partner it's better to say you know what if you're going to go outside and have your fun please use a condom and after discussing if you want an open or a close relationship, you can talk about and if we're gonna uh, be a, a close relationship or we don't want to use the condom, let's both go and have the test. So that both of the partners know we are starting from scratch. None of us have any STIs or HIV. So in the relationship then you can decide not to use the condom but that means that you still need to keep in mind things can happen outside talk about it and sometimes it is about people sometimes are strange they need permission to know okay even you don't want me to mess around outside but if i do i'm gonna use the condom you know and this that's the reality if we are talking in a starting relationship. If you are talking about a relationship that is going on for a while, but you don't trust your man or you don't trust your, your, your wife, you need to sit down with each other and talk about it. You know? Mm -hmm. Because if you don't, you're gonna uh, catch something because you kept quiet. For example, I know women that they suspect that their husband are messing around. If you are suspecting it, discuss it with him. If it is difficult, then tell him, if you want sex with me, you need to use a condom because I don't trust you. And I know, and people will say, yeah, Juan, you need to keep in mind the African culture. I know the African culture. It doesn't exist for me. But it is about taking responsibility for your life. Because a lot of these women, they have children. And what will happen if you get sick and die? You know? A wolf will, what for example you are giving to your children, if it is okay to mess around unprotected. My, the thing is, you won't know. And because of this jealousy thing, you know, did not accept that, yeah, my husband should do this, but the man is still doing it, you know. I mean, it's very disturbing that you give way for jealousy for you to, I mean, get this virus. Yeah, but I think that it, isn't, it, it doesn't have to do with jealousy, it, it just has to do with you take responsibility for your life. You know, because if you suspect somebody is messing around, don't have sex with them or use a condom. My, uh, as I said, this culture thing, the small man who will just um, agree that, yeah, to use condom on his wife because the wife said, I suspect you. So from now on, let's use the condom. <coughs> I understand that, but I think that if we really want to stop this, mm -hmm. women need to change, women need to take charge, and women need to think about what is my responsibility in this marriage or this relationship if they are not married, you know? And what kind of norms and value I'm going to give to my children surrounding sex and sexuality because 
I know also that a lot of parents are saying you need to save it until you are married. Yeah. But we know that a lot of young people, they don't have the, they don't save it. Mm -hmm. Or they don't want to save it, or the temptation yeah, outside is to, it's, yeah. <laughs> and then it's better to teach them, if you cannot, there's a condom. And especially for the girls, and I know parents will get upset with me when I say this, but if you suspect that your child is already sexual active, discuss with them safer sex. That means discuss with them condom use, discuss with them the pill, or what kind of contraception you want to use. You know, because they need the education to protect themselves. I did. You suspect that your child is sexually active, you talk, and then he's saying no, what do you do? Then you will give them the protection even if they don't want them. So for example, you will buy like a box of condom and put it in your bedroom and say, even if you're saying <laughs> I'm good not, tip. <laughs> put it there in and case. if you really need it, you can get it. For the women, it is better to go double dutch. So use the pill and use the condom. If you don't, if you suspect your daughter is having sex, and I know you don't want them to have it, but they're gonna do it anyway. So go to them, to your GP, let him prescribe the pill for them, and then put a box of condom in the bedroom. If she needs it, she will take it, you know? Okay, well, there was this woman I spoke to last week, and she's saying that the daughter is getting out of hand, mm -hmm. you know. So, because of that, she had decided to take her to the house doctor to get, um, yeah, contraceptives and mm -hmm. things. But I told her that um, if <laughs> she thinks she's really messing around, I don't think contraceptive is the right thing. Because with that, you are just preventing pregnancy. What about this? Um, and that's why I'm talking about the double dutch. Double dutch means using contraceptive and oh, using the condom. So that means, firstly, that every parent has the responsibility to sit with their children and talk about what do you expect from them. And we are in Europe, I will hear them already saying, yeah, when we are in Europe, things are different. True. I'm not going to say it isn't. It is true. But even in Africa, young girls get pregnant mm -hmm. because they weren't prepared at home. Because by telling them, I don't want you to have sex, doesn't prepare them to deal with the outside world. You need to sit with your children and talk about peer pressure. So what do I mean by peer pressure? Tell them about how their friends can try to convince them to do things they don't want to. And how do you deal with it? And how do you, and what can you do about it as parents? Let them to come to you, let them talk to you, you know? Give them the trust that everything they, can, they tell you, you're going to listen to it before you judge them. Because a lot of time, children are afraid of going to their parents because they think that the parents don't trust them or the parents are going to, you know, punish them. And parents are saying the kids are not being open. Yeah, but kids can be open when you are open. So if you are not going to talk about certain topics at home, but you expect them to come to you and tell you about it, then you're wrong. You know, start early, educate them. Educate them about their body, educate them about how to protect themselves. Sorry, educate them also about how to say no to the peer pressure. So how to say no to their friends outside, you know, because Everybody wants to uh, be part of a group or, you know, and it is hard when you're growing up. You know that, I know that thinking back when we were young, 
we had that peer pressure too. And we needed to deal with it because we wanted that jeans and we wanted that t-shirt, but also we wanted to go out. And when we start develop, our body started to developing, all those hormones going through your, through your body, you don't know how to deal with it. And telling a, a young person, oh, go and take a shower, doesn't work. You know? So you need to tell them about what is going on with them, but also how they're going to protect themselves. And talk openly about what do you think. And I know a lot of the, the African communities, especially the Ghanaian community, they are very religious. They believe. But believing means also taking care of yourself, you know? So if you are not protecting your child, how do you want God to guide you to protect your child? I'm not saying to the parents, go ahead, give a free ticket and let your child have sex. I'm not saying that. I'm saying, discuss with them what it means to have sex early, what it means to have an early pregnancy, what it means to catch a, a disease that can destroy your life, and give them option to choose. That's what I'm saying. Well, let me bring you back to the condom thing. Go ahead. What do you have to say? Are people not, I mean, refusing to use it because they think it's not natural, it doesn't feel the same without it. The thing is, at the beginning, mm -hmm. it doesn't feel natural. It's especially because, it's especially for those who have done it without and then suddenly need to use it, it feels a little bit uncomfortable. At the same time, when you are in the mood and you know you're preparing to get into that high thing, it is difficult to, you know, say, hold on, I need to put a condom on. So you need to make it part of the process. Don't put it in the carbon and then you need to stand up and go and get it. for it. You know? <laughs> Okay. Just put it there so you just need to reach and get it. At the same time, important is if you don't give the woman the time to prepare herself, then I mean it's... What I mean by that is that the woman needs her time to accept the man at a certain time, so to penetrate her. Mm -hmm. And if the woman isn't ready for it, it's going to be painful yeah. and it's going to feel uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. So just take your time preparing the woman so she is ready to receive you. I think the women have too much problem with that because according to the men, some of the men are spoken to, the moment they try to put the condom on, His Royal Highness becomes uh, soft. Yeah, I can imagine. But that has to do that a lot of men need to practice. You know, um, I know people will say, and excuse me viewers, but I'm going to mention the things the way they are. Mm -hmm. If you're masturbating mm -hmm. and it is the first time that you're going to use a condom, try to masturbate with a condom. That will give you another feeling. Or if you have a heart on, try to put a condom on. Because it has to do also with your mindset. Yeah. So you need to practice. As everything in life, even for having a good sexual life, you need to practice. You need to know the, uh, your body and you need to know the other person's body. So important as men is, is to incorporate that in your sex scenario. You know, practice with a condom. Use lubricant that can help you also to, to feel a little bit more. But it's important also for the women to be prepared because the condom is a little bit uh, tough at the beginning if you don't have lubricant. And if you're a woman who doesn't produce a lot of uh, fashion of uh, 
fluid. So it means um, there are some women who can produce much of the fluid. Yeah, and then they can buy uh, like uh, sensor loop. Okay. They can buy it at the at the um, apotheker okay. or the the quest. And it is very uh, easy to use, and it is uh, very. It feels very natural. You put and, it inside, and you put it inside, mm -hmm. and it will help. So it is about preparing. And believe me, if you don't want to put the condom on, you can suggest to your partner. You know what? You use the female condom. Yeah, that too. You know, so it is so a little bit more expensive. Uh, nowadays, they have uh, Has changed. It improved? It. Yeah, they, it is very improved, and it feels mm -hmm. better. So, if the guy is having trouble putting the, the regular condom on, he can suggest to the uh, partner, you know what, you use the female condom, and then you will have the same effect, and then he will not get, you know. Using of the female condom, I've heard it's also a bit dangerous, especially Why? when you want to penetrate from behind, you know. And that once um, it went into somebody's womb and they have to operate the person to take it out. Do you mm, think it's true? No, I don't <laughs> think it's true. Those the person is just put in and the end is just there. So if it's a big penis or the person is penetrating so hard, can't it push it inside? No. Mm -hmm. It's always stay open on Yeah, because the, the female condom is like a, a sack with two rings. Yeah. One ring, the inside yeah. ring, mm -hmm. is to uh, put the, the, the condom into the vagina. Mm -hmm. And the outside ring is where the man penetrates the women through it. And at the beginning, uh, when they started uh, producing it, it was making some s funny noises <laughs> and things like that. But they have improved it a lot. And nowadays, I hear that people are quite comfortable with it. Why don't make it a bit, I mean, cheaper as the male ones? So that it will be more easier. Um, that is something that I don't really know. You know, I think it has to do with that because it it does it isn't so familiar but it it is cheaper than it was before nowadays but with the kkd i know like if we are given four lectin or something for condom they always give you the men one yeah. why don't you never give it the female because there is a, a price difference because for example the condom that we buy the cost us uh for the for the male condom like let's say between 10 and 15 euro cents and if we're gonna buy the female condom to distribute it is too much because it is like almost five euros for three so there's a price difference now people are not used to so maybe there's also something to carry it upstairs that they should i will do that yeah do something about it and if they make it more available like where they give us to give out on our four letting and things and we have the female one people start using it and seeing that mm -hmm. it's comfortable maybe it also help to reduce That's the rate true. of HIV AIDS I will bring it upstairs and, <laughs> and see what they're gonna say about it and at the same time I think it will give women more power to, to take responsibility yeah. for them self you know because if you as a female is responsible for her protection yeah. and you're carrying your female condom nobody can say that you're not protecting yourself the only thing that people can say is probably oh she is carrying condom so she is a, a prostitute and i will tell women don't care about what people say if you're taking care of yourself be proud that you are doing it. Well, um, I want to focus a bit on the youth. Yeah. What do you have to say to them now? 
because I know most of them are also having unprotected sex because mm -hmm. they've also tested and they think it's okay to just go along with that. They are not married, they are living in their separate houses and they are holding this paper and sleeping. Yeah, without the condom, do you think it's advisable? I think that firstly, uh, they need to realize that, and especially when you are young, um, we say they have like serial monogamous relationship because most of their relationship is like two to three months yeah. to six months. Yeah. So I will advise them that every time that you have been in a relationship, a sexual relationship, and you change from partner, please go together and check up. Make a checkup that you know, okay, I'm disease free, and then you can go into the negotiation. If you want to have unprotected sex, then you both need to talk about how you want to do that. And if you don't know the person, even for you, it's difficult because sometimes they say, Oh, I know that person, and they know that person for three months. Mm -hmm. In their opinion, it is a long time, you know, and it is about trust your gut, trust that if you think, oh, this person is a player, if it is a female or a, a, a male, don't have unprotected sex with them. If you know that the guy just broke up, don't have sex with him without a condom. For me, I think, uh, yeah, for the youth, if you are not married even if you've been tested your partner has been tested so long as you are not it's better to just stay on with the condom until you really make a commitment the thing is that for them the 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 a commitment can be after three months in their opinion <laughs> and that's how you think and uh, I'm, I'm, I, I'm not judging them but if you're gonna think, okay, after three months or after six months, there's a steady relationship, go and get tested, you know, and then make then your decision if you want to be in a relationship without using a condom. But also make some deal with your partner about having sex outside of the door, yes or no. Okay, and about this use of condom, that is the uh, thing they are disturbing their sex life. And is it okay to maybe penetrate from the beginning before you put the condom on? No, because the, 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 the risk to have an STI or HIV or get pregnant is really high. It's really high. Yeah, because a lot of times they say, yeah, but we didn't penetrate, we were just playing. Yeah. But even with playing, there is some risk. So if you're going to be in the neighborhood of the uh, private parts and the risk is there that it can get in use a condom okay but maybe is it is soft and to get it hard is maybe playing with the pennies around the clitoris and th is that also <laughs> <laughs> dangerous <laughs> It is it's not inside yet, <coughs> but maybe around the thing it is, then. is even if it is soft, mm -hmm. there is still fluid coming out, and some men had more forecome than others. And forecome go it finds its way, and in forecome can be, you know, some semen that can impregnate you. So, preferably, don't do. That. And the side to up there, it should be on. Yeah. And I would hmm. say, if you are young and you, if you are sexual active as a female, use the pill and use the condom. If you are a guy and you are sexual active and your girl isn't as far in being sexual active, educate her by telling her, you know what, I want you to use the pill also. Because the responsibility of contraceptive is also responsibility of the male, not only the female. Yeah. You need to ask because when she gets pregnant, 
You cannot say, yeah, but I did ask her, yeah, no, you need to ask and follow up. Viewers, a very interesting conversation with Juan. I think we've had a lot. We are really going to learn something from it. But before we run up, Juan, I so want you to give your last word to the viewers, to the youth, to the parents, and whatever you think we need to know to keep us safe. I think it will start with the whole community. I think that every um, member of the community has a responsibility to uh, help each other to have a safer sexual life. That means that if we believe in um, sex uh, can only be after you are married, educate people and prepare them and give them the skills to do that. Otherwise you are telling people to do something that they cannot reach. If you know that people are having unprotected sex, discuss with them the risk they are taking for themselves and for the other. And if you are married and you choose to have a relationship outside of your marriage, please keep it safe. I don't want to be the one who's telling you, you know what, you, you cannot do that because I know we are dealing with human beings and human beings sometimes do things that we don't always agree with. For the youth, I think when you decide to be sexual active, it is important to get all the information so you can protect yourself and your partner. What that means is, is that as a female, you need to get information about contraceptive and condom use. And as a male, you need to know that you need to get information about the condom, but also from the contraceptive, because people can tell you we are on the pill, but you need to know what the pill is all about. So you need the information and you need to discuss it. Also, discuss with your parents that even they have asked you not to have sex before the marriage, but you decided differently, let them give you their opinion about how to keep it safe for yourself and for your sex partner. And at the same time, having an open communication with your, a conversation with your parents about um, responsibility, love, and all of that, because a lot of time we focus on the deed. What I mean by that is we focus on having sex, but we forget that uh, being in love, taking responsibility for somebody else is also part of the education that we, that we need as a human being. Hmm. Being in love and taking responsibility is part of being a human being. Wow, that is very, very powerful. Thank you very, very much, Juan. And I hope you'll be giving us more of this information. At least we can grab you once in every three months. Of course, so, no problem. Thank you. I really appreciate it. I really love speaking to you. Thank Anyways, you. Sir, thank you very much. And we'll be coming back more with such information. Keep watching.